Hello and welcome to Business Standard Views of the Week. Can India's COVID batter reputation be redeemed at home and abroad? Can PM Modi outwit his opponents in the next Lok Sabha elections despite the COVID setback? Why does India's economic recovery face a serious challenge despite the supply side having sprung back up? Subscribe to Business Standard and read this week's top opinion pieces to find out. We start with a column that is very relevant amid the second COVID wave. India's reputation has taken a beating on the global stage. Domestic and international press coverage of the country's second COVID wave has been graphic and dire. Noshad Forbes' latest column is a how-to guide for governments, both at the center and in state, industry and the people for redeeming the country's reputation. Forbes also outlines what a good outcome would look like for the country, along with the principles and actions necessary to achieve it. Last but not the least, the column calls on the country's leaders to lead and trust the people with the truth. Next, we move to a business standard editorial that examines the government's proposed timeline for ramping up vaccine availability. Amid a stalling vaccination program, the government has projected that 2.16 billion doses of various coronavirus vaccines will be manufactured in India between August and December of 2021. Business standard explains how the government's hope about manufacturing the projected doses depends upon several variables that may not work out as expected. Stating that the government's timeline may well be optimistic, the editorial also suggests steps India can take to fill the vaccine gap till supply improves. Now moving on to politics. The three things that derailed the economy in the past, war, drought and oil, were mostly absent during Prime Minister Modi's regime. His reputation for getting things done did not take a beating even after chaos ruled in the wake of demonetization in 2016. In fact, PM Modi seemed blessed with the elusive quality that Napoleon wanted in his generals. Now, TN Nainan argues that the once in a century COVID pandemic has exhausted that one asset that PM Modi had in plenty all these years. On the topic of the Prime Minister's reputation, Veer Sangvi enlists the help of top cephalogists and argues that while PM Modi has reasons to worry over his government's mishandling of the coronavirus pandemic, his opponents should not see any chances for them in this. They could just be smug and predictions about the exit of this government would be premature. Singhvi's column reveals three broad reasons why PM Modi could still win the next Lok Sabha elections, along with two scenarios that could prove disastrous to his prospects. Next, we have another column with an eye on the 2024 elections. Can PM Modi's third bid for power be made more challenging? If so, who will do it and how, especially if the Gandhis and Congress fail to rise to that challenge? Stating that politics is never a one-horse race forever, Shekhar Gupta answers these questions and reveals the one option that opposition parties have to be competitive in the 2024 Lok Sabha elections. We round up this week's BS Views with three incisive pieces on the economy. Even amid the loss of both lives and livelihoods brought on by COVID, the supply side of the Indian economy has sprung back. However, Mahesh Vyas's column argues that this piece of good news doesn't tell the complete story and that an incomplete recovery in employment and rock-bottom consumer sentiments pose a major challenge to the recovery process. Meanwhile, A.K. Bhattacharya explains why the government's worry on the corporation tax revenue front is not going to end soon. In fact, he argues that it might worsen in the coming years until the growth engine revives sustainably to make good the loss on account of lower tax rates. Last but not the least, another business standard editorial details how an aggressive cane energy has wrong-footed the government and put the latest twin ambitions of driving economic growth through a foreign direct investment and bridging the physical deficit via disinvestment in danger with Kane Energy moving as US code to seize the assets of state-owned but privatization-bound Air India, thereby hampering efforts to find a buyer for the ailing flag career business standard cautions the government that its serial missteps in the era of international arbitration may cost the Indian economy dearly. That's all we have for you in this edition of BS Views. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. 
For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.